Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of Sundial, ticker symbol SNDL. And uh, yeah, here we are looking at it on the one minute time scale uh, at 9.45 in the morning, Eastern time, uh, before their earnings call in just about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna get that set up. Uh, but I did just want to go over the chart real briefly uh, before we get into that. And it does look like uh, SNDL has reported, uh, let's see, net revenue of 909 million Canadian uh, for 2023. Uh, and so it does sound like it is a foundational period, according to the CEO. So uh, you know, it sounds like it's pretty good news. Uh, it does look like the price is respecting this yellow line at a dollar uh, forty-nine. So let's just uh, let's see. My my mouse is getting a little wonky. I might actually have to change the battery of it. Um, actually, no, I'm not, I don't think I have to. I thought I had to a couple days ago, uh, and then I did. But let's see. I am going to. Yeah, I'm just not looking at, used to looking at the minute time scale. So let's see. Uh, a daily time scale here. That's where I drew these lines from. Yeah, okay, so we got this, um, let's see, this line here based on the high that was hit on February 16th, $1.49. So price is, you know, just hovering above that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so I'm going to go get this set up for us. I'll leave this on the... Um, Let's see, uh, one minute time scale. If you guys would prefer a different time scale, I can do that too. And I'm going to try and do this, let's see, a little bit stealthily. So you guys can keep this, keep your eyes on the chart while I look over at getting um, the webcast set up. So let's see, how does this, okay, yeah, I think that should be good. And so now I can navigate over to Chrome, yep, so you guys got your eyes on the chart there. I'm looking at Chrome, getting this set up. Unless unless you guys want to watch me do this, not terribly exciting. So, yeah, just got to enter in my info so I can join the webcast. So there's the music, and what I will probably do, I'm going to plug myself into uh, the audio, and I'm going to keep it on mute for you guys, because I don't want to get a copyright strike, uh, and then in case, you know, the music is copyrighted, I, don't, I suspect it's not, but I did have an issue before with a Coinbase earnings call. Um, yeah, let's see here. Um, um, all right, and I will also, let's see, add the Chrome window there, and I will, let's see, adjust this, hmm, let's see, okay, so Chrome, Got that. I'm just going to turn the volume off. So, all right. So, I got their music in my ear. And so, I will know exactly when it starts. And I will probably refresh the window uh, in about nine, 10 minutes just because. Um, let's see. And I can also show you what I'm looking at, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is, this is their earnings call. And so I'll probably pop this up if they do have a display. Typically these are just, you know, audio. And, um, and so then we'll just look at the chart. Um, but yeah, if anything does pop up, I will uh, show this. And uh, yeah, the last time I did an earnings call, there was kind of a, a delay in it starting, 
I had to refresh, and so I will refresh this right before it starts so we don't miss a second of it. Um, and I will, let's see, just try to adjust, kind of like so at the bottom there's a little banner, and so we can see what's going on. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I hope you guys are all, hey. Why is this bearish reaction? I see that in the comments. Let's see. I'm not sure. It uh, Oftentimes I feel like uh, whenever earnings call, it's just, it's like uh, playing with people's emotions basically uh, that maybe it ends up going up. But right now this is just trying to get people to panic, sell, you know, and then buy back in and it rallies up. So it could be that I feel like whenever there's, you know, a meeting, earnings call, um, uh, the reactions before it can can be misleading. And so let's see if we look at the hourly time frame. Yeah, I mean, and actually from this, this does look like, you know, a little cup here. And so I could, yeah, that, this says, actually doesn't look too bad because you have, you know, this line here, 149, you got a test of, you know, 152 basically, uh, so this is on the 18th, got rejected then, pulled back, so you could think of this as perhaps a cup, this is the handle, and then it's broken out, but now it's pulling back to retest that line. And so really, hopefully, whatever happens during the market today, I don't think it matters too much. If it closes above $1.49, I think that's good. If it closes below, that could just mean that, uh, you know, it's going to be residing down here a little bit before potentially moving higher. Looking at the chart, bigger picture. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot of the uh, cannabis stocks are um, positioned to be moving a lot higher in this Let's see, I mean, this has just been down here for quite some time. Do have a reverse split back here, one for 10. Um, yeah, and this has been, it looks like making higher lows. I don't know. Um, this is lower than this one, but generally like from this low over here. So that doesn't look too bad. And also, too, like, I mean, this, you get this big move up, and then it looks like this could be some consolidation here, maybe over the next few days, and then that would be a bull flag. But you also have to pay attention to what's going on in the flag. Like, I had just put out a video on ChargePoint mentioning that it looked like it's a bear flag. I think it's going to break to the downside. But I wasn't paying attention to all of the bottoming wicks. Uh, and so I feel like sometimes, you know, the uh, the chart can tell you two different things depending on how you look at it. And so, you know, you might think, oh, this is a bull flag. But if we do close below yesterday's open, which was at $1.48, if we close below $1.48, that's a bearish engulfing candle. That could suggest that this potential bull flag might break to the downside rather than the upside, the bull flag being kind of a false pattern. Um, and yeah, but it's all going to depend on what the close is for today. And then if you do get a bearish engulfing candle, um, then you'd want to look for, is there a continuation? Is there confirmation of that signal? And so as of right now, yeah, I mean, it does look like we're putting in a bearish engulfing candle, but you need to see another day's close to get confirmation of that. And, um, you know, this is just, it's around earnings, so it's going to be volatile, like, I don't see any signs up here, really, that suggest that this could be turning around other than this being a bearish engulfing candle so far, but the day is not over. Yeah, so it's quite possible. I mean, like around earnings and stuff, if it does something that you don't expect, like, well, why is it pulling back? It could just be discounted shares, and it's going to rally higher. And then if you do, I'm going to switch back over to the daily time frame for a second. I mean, if you do factor in, you know, a dollar forty-five down to the low, dollar twenty-five. I mean, we could just get a measurement 
uh, it's like 20 cents down. That's like a really like a risk of 14% if it were to return to those all time lows. Um, but you know, then like, what's the potential upside from here, like from current price right around, you know, 145 up to here, up to that red line, 18%. So I've, you know, the risk to reward, I would say is in your favor, even just getting up to this red line, but it could definitely go higher than that. But it could also not make it to that level. This could be the top. So yeah, I think it's it's good when uh, trading stuff like this to be able to to be in a position where if it does go down to $1.25, evaluate, is it respecting that or is it going to dip lower and then um, can add more? I think that's one thing that I have a tough time with. I I never really have enough on the side to, oh, it pulled back. I can really add a lot more. Um, and I, th I think that's really like the best way to be trading. So, so that's something that I'm working on. So just about three minutes, I might adjust the format of these windows real quick. And let's see. I'm doing this in OBS. I want to adjust that window that's cropped there at the bottom. Uh, it's just, you know, white screen from this display, but I can't adjust it. I'm doing it in OBS. That's how I stream, and it's it's being a little wonky. Sometimes it gives me a hard time. Yeah, so I might not be able to adjust that, but that's not a problem because all it would say there, I was just going to crop it so it'd say, you know, Sundial or SNDL, I guess they changed their name, uh, full year and fourth quarter 2023 results conference call and webcast. And so I'm going to actually refresh this because it might be starting soon. All right, and I will also, I'm going to send out a tweet that I am streaming this. All right. And so there's that. And I'll switch this over to the one minute time frame. Yeah, 142 could be a great discount down there. 1420. And Cool, there's that. And let's see. Still nothing coming from their website.
It is 10 o'clock Eastern, so it should be starting very soon. I'm listening to it. I will turn the volume on for you guys once it does start. It's just orchestral music for the time being, so. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a bounce here, so. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, um, I, I would think that this is discounted pricing right now. This could be, could be doing some good, let's see. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, really just have to see how the, the daily candle looks. Maybe it's a bearish engulfing candle. Completely, in, as of right now, completely engulfing all of the trading from yesterday. <clears throat> But yeah, that could be um, discounted shares right there. I'm just gonna refresh their website again to see if it's starting. Hmm. <clears throat> It's starting, so. This morning, Let me know the volume's good. I'm gonna turn my mic off so you guys can just listen to it and I'll be here taking notes and uh, writing on the chart. This press release is available on the company's website at sndl.com and filed on Edgar and Cedar as well. The webcast replay of the conference call will also be available on the sndl.com website. SNDL has also posted a supplementer in investor presentation along with a shareholder letter from Chief Executive Officer Zach George on its SNDL.com website. Presenting on this morning's call, we have Zach George, Chief Executive Officer, Alberto Ferdero, Chief Financial Officer, Tank Rander, President, Liquor Retail, and Tyler Robson, President, Cannabis. Before we start, I would like to remind investors that certain matters discussed in today's conference call or answers that may be given to questions could constitute forward-looking statements. Actual results could differ materially from those anticipated. Risk factors that could affect results are detailed in the company's financial reports and other public filings that are made available on CDAR and EDGAR. Additionally, all financial figures mentioned are in Canadian dollars unless otherwise indicated. We will now make prepared remarks and then we'll move on to analyst questions. I would now like to turn the call over to Zach George. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our full year and fourth quarter 2023 earnings call. 2023 was a transformational year for SNDL, marked by several financial milestones, including record revenue and gross profit. The year began with a remarkable year-over-year -year revenue growth of almost 1,000% in Q1 of 2023, which was then followed by positive free cash flow generation of 18 million in the second half of the year. 2023 net revenue reached a record 909 million, a 28% increase from the previous year, while gross profit surged to a record 190 million, up 36% from the prior year. SNDL's team has worked to build a scaled and diversified platform that we believe will be the basis for the creation of sustainable shareholder value. Our operations include award-winning liquor and cannabis retail banners, broad manufacturing capabilities, and a uniquely positioned non-consolidated exposure to U.S. cannabis operators with a fair value of more than half a billion dollars. 
We are also in the process of monetizing a number of real estate and credit assets that will continue to feed and strengthen our industry-leading balance sheet. The acquisition of Valens in January of 2023 was a key tactical move for SNDL, enhancing our upstream capabilities in Canadian cannabis. We now have manufacturing capabilities across all major product categories and continue to drive automation and labor efficiencies. We have exited exposure to high cost own cultivation and leaned into procurement opportunities. Integrating Valens' operations into our infrastructure has led to significant synergies resulting in approximately $22 million in annualized cost savings. These savings stem from better capacity utilization and various cost reduction initiatives, including the optimization of our cultivation footprint. Our progress is reflected in the steady sequential improvement of our gross profit over the year. We expect our cannabis operations segment to deliver additional operating efficiencies in 2024 and are excited by growth opportunities in B2B and international markets. We've continued to build upon the stable foundation of our liquor retail segment with a focus on margin enhancement. We've achieved this through the launch of our data program, the refinement of inventory management practices, and growth in private label offerings. These initiatives have been pivotal in optimizing our operations within this segment. We also reach record results in revenue, gross profit, and cash flow within our cannabis retail segment. The increase showcases the company's efforts to, in continued margin expansion initiatives and data program enhancements. In 2023, we streamlined our investment portfolio by divesting from equity securities and certain credit exposures. As of year end, the company held a portfolio of cannabis-related investments with a carrying value of $572 million, including $538 million to Sunstream. SNDL's joint venture, Sunstream Bank Corp. launched Sunstream USA Group in the third quarter. This new entity is designed to hold the post-reorganized equity of SkyMint and Parallel, which include licenses in Florida, Michigan, Massachusetts, and Texas. It is structured to exclude voting or operational control, enabling SNDL to preserve its NASDAQ listing until further regulatory reform allows for the consolidation of these exposures. The establishment of Sunstream USA Group represents a compliant, arm's length expansion, ensuring that SNDL does not engage in plant touching activities while participating in a multi state cannabis platform. The restructurings of SkyMint and Parallel result in simplified capital structures, the elimination of certain material liabilities, and improved competitive positioning. The closing of these transactions will provide Sunstream USA Group with the optionality to access third-party investors, engage in industry consolidation through mergers and acquisitions, and gain critical consumer insights. The structure of Sunstream USA Group is being reviewed by NASDAQ to align with all U.S. compliance and governance standards. While many Canadian operators make promotional statements regarding future U.S. dominance, SNDL is the only Canadian licensed producer with cannabis enterprise exposure in the U.S. at this scale. We look forward to updating shareholders on these developments in the near future. As mentioned in my shareholder letter, which can be found on our website, SNDL maintains a debt-free balance sheet with a market capitalization of around $530 million, well below our cash and credit investments valued at $767 million, and without any consideration for our operating segments which continue to show both revenue growth and margin improvement. We believe that the company's recent market valuation does not reflect SNDL's intrinsic value and that the valuation gap is so significant that investors purchasing shares today could potentially be acquiring substantial asset value at a low or even negative cost on an applied basis. Considering the broader Canadian cannabis industry context and the CRA's garnishments to combat an estimated $300 million in unpaid excise taxes, SNDL's financial health places us in an enviable position. With our debt-free, cash-rich balance sheet with no tax arrears, we expect to benefit from the financial instability of peers who will struggle to consistently deliver product to provincial boards and end markets on a profitable basis. Our steadfast consumer-centric approach and unwavering commitment to quality and regulated products remain the bedrock of our strategy. Our demonstrated success with both mergers 
and acquisitions and organic growth has laid the foundation for our team to build momentum and strive for excellence in execution. Looking ahead to 2024, we are well positioned for expansion, utilizing the extensive scale of our platform to drive sustained value creation for our shareholders. We are focused on realizing efficiencies and margin expansion across our segments with quality of consumer experience at the forefront of our endeavors. Finally, I want to express my gratitude to the entire SNDL team for their dedication in 2023. The outstanding results we achieved are a testament to your hard work and commitment to our vision. To our investors, this is a team that wants to win. We have significant work ahead, but the undeniable improvement in our results is driving conviction in our ability to push harder as we aggressively pursue our performance goals and outcomes. I will now pass the call to Alberto to provide more information on our financial results. Thank you, Zach. I want to remind you all that amounts discussed today are denominated in Canadian dollars, unless otherwise stated. Certain amounts referred to on this call are non-GAAP and non-IFRS measures. For definitions of these measures, please refer to SNDL's management discussion and analysis document. Since joining SNDL team in July, I have seen significant progress, not just in terms of our financials, but for our organization as a whole. We have navigated the challenges of the regulatory products industry and made a strong improvement in how we operate and how we manage our finances. Our focus has been on strengthening the balance sheet, enhancing cash flow generation, and driving profitable growth. Through several strategic initiatives on discipline financial and operational management, we're improving our cost structure and sharpening our capital allocation. Not only have we redesigned our operating governance and financial planning processes, uh, we have also realigned the finance structures and attracted key talent to drive value creation while increasing the efficiency of our back office. It is exciting to see how these changes are already having positive impact in 2024. Now let's dive into our consolidated financial performance for Q4 2023. Our net revenue reached 249 million, or 3% growth from 240 million in the same quarter last year. This includes a revenue elimination entry of 12 million uh, that we introduced as of the third quarter of 2023. Without this adjustment, our net revenue growth in the fourth quarter would have been 8%. I am particularly proud to highlight our gross profit for the quarter, which sets a new record at 57 million, or 23% of sales. This compares to 44 million in Q4 2022. This significant improvement is a testament to our supply chain optimization efforts, including the strategic decision to close our old Alberta cultivation facility announced in October. Change in cash and cash equivalent was negative 7 million, compared to the negative 12 million in the fourth quarter of 2022, a 42% improvement. We achieved a positive free cash flow of 1.4 million in the quarter, showcasing the effective cash management despite the usual increase in working capital associated with the holiday season. This reflects our second consecutive quarter of positive free cash flow in 2023. Our operating income saw a loss of 85 million, which includes 29 million of restructuring costs and restructuring related asset write-offs, and also 29 million of goodwill impairments. This is a 45% improvement over the 155 million loss we reported in the fourth quarter of 2022. Lastly, our adjusted EBITDA was a positive 3.5 million, a 147% improvement from the loss reported in the last quarter of 2022. This improvement is a clear indicator of our commitment to streamlining operations and enhancing our financial health. Turning to our annual performance, I am pleased to report several record achievements in 2023. Our net revenue reached an all-time high of 909 million, up 20. 8% from $712 million in 2022. Gross profit for the year also hit a new record at $190 million, or 21% of our sales. This is a significant increase of 36% compared to the $140 million, or 20% of sales we reported last year. This is a testament to our improved cost management and operational efficiency. Changing cash and cash equivalents was negative 84.5 million in 2023, compared to a negative 279 million, 70% year-over-year improvement. 
A highlight for the year was achieving positive free cash flow in the third and fourth quarters, totaling 17.7 million. This includes an impressive 16.3 million in the third quarter and 1.4 million in the fourth quarter, and as mentioned earlier, demonstrating our ability to generate cash while continuing to invest in growth. Our operating income showed a loss of 163 million for the year, which includes restructuring charges of 20 million and asset impairments of 55 million, as well as streamlining our operations to enable future profitable growth. Despite this, we have seen a remarkable 53% improvement from the previous year's loss of 348 million. Finally, our adjusted EBITDA from continuing operations increased to 29 million in 2023, a significant improvement from a loss of 16 million in 2022. I will let Tank and Tyler provide more details on the Q4 and year in 2023 results for the liquor retail and cannabis operation segments. But I would like to comment on the results for our cannabis retail segment. Cannabis retail revenue includes operations of Nova retail stores for the period uh, of March 31st, 2022 to the December 31st, 2022. In Q4 2023, our cannabis retail segment witnessed a 10% increase in net revenue, reaching 75 million compared to the 68 million in the same quarter of the previous year. And same store sales increased by 2%. Gross profit was 20 million or 27% of sales, making a 27% increase from the previous year. Our proprietary data licensing program generated 4.2 million in Q4 2023. For the year end 2023, um, for our cannabis retail segment, we achieved a record net revenue of 290 million, making a significant 41% increase from the 206 million reported in 2022. Equally noteworthy is the record gross profit from this segment, which reached 74 million or 25% of sales in 2023. This represents a substantial 56% year over year increase from 47 million or 23% of sales in 2022. These figures highlight our successful margin expansion initiatives and operational efficiencies. Additionally, our proprietary data licensing program generated 12.3 million in revenue in 2023, up 193% from 4.2 million in 2022. Finally, looking at our investments and equity positions in the year end 2023. As of the end of 2023, the company had deployed capital into cannabis-related credit investments with current value of 572 million, including 538 million through the Sunstream joint venture. In 2023, our investment portfolio generated a positive operating income of 12 million, a significant improvement from the 91 million loss in the previous year. Despite a minor decrease in interest and fee revenue to 14 million from 17 million, our equity accounted in the seeds showed a notable recovery, contributing to 6.8 million in profits compared to 43 million loss in 2022. The company financials health is strong, supported by 766 million in unrestricted cash, marketable securities, and investments, leading to an net good value of 1.2 billion. It is also important to highlight that we have not raised any cash through the share um, offering since June. 2021. Uh, and to date, the company has no debt. SNDL's board of directors approved extending the company's share repurchase program to November 20, 2024. The company's share repurchase program continues to be available to lower the outstanding share flow. Management will continue to assess opportunities to utilize the program um, to the extent we believe it is in the best interest of our shareholders. For the three months ended December 31st, 2023, the company did not purchase common shares for cancellation. Our results this year represent another solid step towards executing our business strategy, our culture of financial rigor and continuous improvement, and the hard work and dedication of our employees. Looking ahead, we're committed to continuing our path of fiscal responsibility and strategic growth. Our goals are clear to deliver value to our shareholders, to invest in innovation and growth opportunities, and to strengthen our market position. I will now pass the talk to Tank uh, to provide an update on our liquor retail results. Thank you, Alberto. 
and thank you all for joining today. Our liquor retail segment remains a steady revenue driver, providing opportunities for increased margins in SNDL's regulated products business. Margin expansion remains a crucial focus as consumer patterns shift in liquor retail. This ensures ongoing growth for our liquor banners while consistently delivering exceptional customer experiences. Looking at full year revenue for 2023, liquor retail contributed $579 million to our cumulative revenue. This represents a growth of 25% year over year from $462 million. A revenue comparisons for liquor retail in 2022 include operations from March 31st to December 31st, 2022, following the acquisition of Alcana. In Q4 2023, revenue remained steady at 159 million, stable from Q4 2022, and increasing 5% from 152 million in the preceding quarter. As of December 31st, 2023, our store count remains stable with 170 total stores, comprised of 12 wine and beyond, 20 liquor depot, and 138 Ace Liquor discounter locations. The impact of wine and beyond banner in new markets is highlighted by the success of our Kelowna Dilworth location, which has seen a 20% increase in revenue year over year. Additionally, the Dilbert location has seen its margin increase 17% from the year prior. We look forward to opening a new Wine and Beyond location in Airdrie, Alberta in early Q2 2024, building on the success of this banner. Gross profit for 2023 amounted to $137 million, representing approximately 24% of sales, up 29% from year prior. For the fourth quarter, gross profit increased to 38 million or 24% of sales from 37 million in Q4 2022 and up 3% from Q3 2023. These increases are driven by seasonality, procurement productivity, and a continued focus on expanding and enhancing our private label offerings which is a key driver in total margin expansion. Private label sales increased by approximately 28% in 2023, now representing 11% of total sales across all banners, an increase of 2% from the year prior. In Q4 2023, gross profit for private label increased 19% from Q4 2022, and 20% sequentially. As a key growth tactic, we are continually developing our private label program to boost margins while maintaining the diverse selection our customers know and love. Look into additional growth opportunities. We have officially launched proprietary data agreements for our liquor retail segment, and revenue will be reported in the first quarter of 2024. Leveraging insight from our cannabis retail segment, we are now able to capitalize on our customer insights to improve vendor relations and the end-to-end -end customer experience, creating accretive revenue and margin growth initiatives with no associated costs of sales. We continue to focus on expanding our reach and accessibility, specifically through digital and e-commerce avenues. Piloting new advertising opportunities, we aim to broaden our digital reach while reducing our environmental footprint. Moving away from traditional print methods is expected to deliver significant cost savings while creating new opportunities to engage our consumer base. Our achievements in 2023 underscore our sharp focus on fundamentals and margin expansion positioning our business to adapt to changing market conditions. This sets the stage for sustained top-line growth throughout 2024. Thank you, and I will now pass the call over to Tyler Robson to cover our cannabis operations segment.
Thank you, Tank. Reflecting on my first full calendar year with SNDL, I'm incredibly proud of the team's achievements and confident in our strategic direction moving forward. 2023 was a building year. We had to dismantle the house and fortify our foundation to support the future of SNDL. We reorganized our facility footprint, streamed on our product portfolio, optimized our processes with a sharp focus on quality and innovation. We changed the fundamentals of our business, aiming for near-term profitability for our cannabis operation segment. This set the stage for a strong 2024, and we have already seen preliminary indicators of our future success. Net revenue for 2023 was 87 million. The growth represents a 96% increase from the year prior, supported by provincial board revenue increasing by 102% and wholesale revenue by 391%. Net revenue for the fourth quarter of 2023 was 26 million, up 112% from 12 million in Q4 2022 and 24% sequentially. This revenue increase highlights the impact of our strategic initiatives, including the acquisitions of Valens and Zenimus, and improving the sales performance across our portfolio. Q4 2023, we saw an improvement in gross profit to negative 1 million from negative 9 million in the same quarter of the previous year, marking an 88% improvement. This significant enhancement in gross profit primarily resulted in the decision to close Olds Alberta facility and move away from high cost cultivation. We still have room for improvement, but we have established substantial competitive advantages over the past year. We have better aligned our operations to manage the fluctuating market, addressing inventory and cost challenges that have stalled our gross margin growth in previous years. We have rationalized our portfolio and shifted over our cultivation efforts to better meet consumer demand, emphasizing the quality, potency, and consistency. SNDL has adopted a fewer, bigger, better approach resulting in the reduction of our total SKU count from 327 to 125, sharpening our focus on key consumer categories. Our improvements in innovation are apparent in record depletion rates and increased acceptance of new SKUs by the provincial board. We have cleared a path to win in the key categories of vape, flower, pre-roll, through improved hardware, increased potency, and to ensure consistent and exacting quality standards. After the quarter end, we revoked our cultivation license from the old facility. Following the transition of all cultivation activities to Athabel, New Brunswick in October 2023, the significantly reduced overhead costs, coupled with the improvements in cultivation and yield, positioned us to further capitalize on revenue and margin growth in the coming quarters. After a tactical and transformative year, we are seeing our expected results and a strengthened path forward for our cannabis operations segment. We remain vigilant on quality, financial prudence, and process innovation to continue to deliver long-term value for both our shareholders and our consumers. Thank you. And I will now pass the call back to Zach for closing remarks. We are proud of our milestones this year and remain focused on sustained profitability. We are determined to continue this upward trajectory and the team is committed to driving shareholder value and excellence in all aspects of our operations. Thank you for your attention this morning. We look forward to providing additional material updates on our initiatives and presenting our Q1 2024 results in the next 45 days. I will now pass the call back for analyst questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the analyst question and answer session. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. You will hear it acknowledging your request. If you're using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing any key. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. The first question comes from Frederico Gomez with ATB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for, for taking my, my questions. Um, Zach, in your shareholder letter, uh, you mentioned how attractive your valuation is, and you said that either the management team is going to close the, the valuation gap or market forces will. So could you just expand a little bit on that in terms of, you know, the alternatives you have or are you know, evaluating to try to close that gap? And also, uh, why not be more aggressive with 5X uh, this quarter? Thank you. Good morning, Fred. Thanks for the question. Um, so just taking that in reverse order, 
Um, due to uh, earnings, cadence, and strategic activity, we've actually been in a blackout for quite a while. That blackout gets lifted um, into the end of March here, so we do have the option to uh, repurchase shares um, at these at these levels. Um, in terms of the reference to closing the valuation gap, um, we're focused on fundamentals uh, first and foremost. And um, as we've been speaking for uh, the last two years about our journey to sustainable free cash flow, we do believe that that's the key to um, uh, bringing in uh, incremental investors, getting um, institutions to um, take a look at our business model and ultimately um, result in much higher implied values than what we're seeing today. In terms of um, other alternatives, I think that that's um, somewhat self-explanatory. Um, there are a whole host of options. You've got a multi-segment business model. Um, you have a, a debt-free entity that is cash rich. And so there are a number of opportunities um, for a variety of different transactions that could be looked at in order to unlock value. Thank you. Um, I guess my, my second question is on the competitive environment in Canada, specifically on, on your cannabis operations. Um, there obviously have been reports about the CRA cracking down on, on delayed excise taxes. I'm just curious, are you seeing any meaningful improvements uh, in competition here uh, this year? And, and I guess from a supply and demand standpoint, do you think that the Canadian market is looking better at this point or still um, oversupplied? Thank you. It's a great question. I would say that we can safely stay, say that Canada remains um, very well supplied. Certainly recent actions and the garnishment um, uh, effects that we're seeing in just at their early stages are going to have an impact on product availability um, and the number of licenses ultimately that are that are out there in Canada. But it's still early, early days. You've seen um, you've seen a few companies uh, disclose uh, events or move into uh, restructurings as a result of um, excess liabilities. But we believe there's there's quite a large um, iceberg underneath the water, uh, and so the concentration of these um, <clears throat> these these excise arrears um, are, are unclear at this time. So we expect a greater impact. Uh, but but this is this is an important part of um, sort of balance being brought back to the Canadian industry. It's certainly going to take some time, but that process is is absolutely underway. Thank you very much. I'll hop back to you. Thanks. The next question comes from Yuan Kang with Canaccord Annuity. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Yuan Kang on behalf of Matt Bottomley. Thank you for the question. Um, just wanted to ask um, about the adjusted EBITDA margin this quarter. Um, it came in about 1.4%. There was a sequential decline of about 5.5%. Um, could you know, comment on the drivers behind this EBITDA slide um, sort of quarter? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jim. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, the main driver was actually a change in valuation in our Sunstream uh, investment. Uh, related to an increased contribution from from our company, uh, we we have to remember we're valuing this um, uh, some stream investment, um, particularly right now for parallel and sky mint on the basis of the future cash flow generation. So, any short term changes to investments or, or collections have short term impacts in those valuations. But um, the underlying uh, cash flow expectations that we have from these businesses in the future uh, remain steady. Um, so I would say it's uh, purely uh, the way our accounting works, um, uh, but that's the main driver. It's actually an $8 million um, loss that we recorded in the fourth quarter, according to that. I see. Uh, thank you so much. And if I could just ask a follow-up. Um, I think you guys already touched upon this um, during Federico's question, but how have you guys taken the recent regulatory changes that have been proposed in the Canadian cannabis um, environment whether it's, you know, the recommendation coming out of the committee in terms of adjusting the excess tax structure, um, uh, the, sorry, and the elimination of provincial stamps, um, along with, you know, we're hearing some news about potential retailer and licensed producer partnerships being used or being recommended. Um, so I guess my question is, how have you guys been taking this news and um, 
has this kind of impacted any of your future expectations going forward? Thanks. Thank you. It's, it's a great question. Um, there were a number of questions in there. Uh, look, in terms of excise reform, I would, uh, we would reiterate the view that this is going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, no one is coming to save us as participants in this industry. And so we don't actually expect excise reform to um, impact the fundamentals of Canadian operators in the near term. Um, that's probably a, a multi-year path. There are, uh, there is room for optimism. We are seeing uh, common sense reform uh, move across a number of provinces and the federal government. So whether that's um, uh, some, some loosening of rules around uh, marketing, uh, a clearer path and understanding of the allowable relationships between um, retail license holders and LPs, um, increase in, in, in license caps, uh, changes to uh, allowable product formats. There are a number of initiatives that are going to drive efficiencies and improvement and ultimately um, improve the consumer experience um, that, are, that are undeniable positives. Um, but but we, we, we expect a, a, a pretty slow pace of change um, on some of the larger items such as excise reform. Got it. Thanks so much. I'll jump back into the queue. The next question comes from Pablo Zuanek with Zuanek and Associates. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Um, Zach, um, regarding the the Sunstream portfolio, uh, maybe I lost, I, I missed it in the presentation, but uh, I think the fair value it says 551 million. I don't know if you can comment about the outstanding principal. And, you know, it's five credits, how much of that is parallel and mint, and, and if you can remind us what is the rest. I think in the past you've given some color on that. But it'd be nice to know of the, of the principal, you know, how much is being equitized uh, and how much is still uh, outstanding, if you can give some color there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pablo, and good morning. Um, good to hear from you. Uh, so we haven't given delineation on individual uh, credits. You're correct that of the five, we have three performing credits in the portfolio. Um, two are in the process of being equitized. Because those, those um, capital structures need to be solidified um, in the restructuring itself and the fact that we are right in the midst of a review with NASDAQ, um, we're going we're gonna to hold off on commenting on the scale and individual valuation of those, um, uh, those equitized credits um, that we expect to occur in the near term. And when we, do, uh, when we do move forward and the NASDAQ review is completed, we expect to give um, significantly more transparency on um, the state of play with those entities, the structure, and the, uh, the, the initial valuation. Thank you. And then in terms of, uh, you know, Sunstream USA, the new company you're setting up, um, um, is the only thing pending uh, the, the NASDAQ issue? Or, or is there any type of litigation still going on? I mean, the trade press, you know, has has had comments on the matter, especially around uh, SkyMint, uh, and I think even Parallel. But just some color would be helpful there. Is it all done and completed, and it's now a matter of, uh, you know, the, the NASDAQ issue, or is there still anything else pending? Thank you. Yeah, in, ter in terms of um, outstanding matters, the, the key issue for us to close um, is this final hurdle with the NASDAQ. There are, as, as you point to, um, there are lingering litigation issues um, involved in these restructurings, um, frustrated stakeholders um, pursuing different outcomes and uh, taking action against various stakeholders, um, sometimes legacy stakeholders and sometimes um, existing creditors, which would include our Sunstream group. So th those are ongoing, uh, and uh, we're not going to get into, into too much detail about um, current litigation, uh, but we don't believe that this is going to hold up our timeline um, but any further. Understood. And then if I can, I just add one more. Um, I mean, obviously, Florida, we're all waiting for April 1st, right? See what happens to the Supreme Court there. There could be a scramble for expansion capital investments. Uh, is Surterra, to some extent, or parallel, you know, hamstrung for the time being uh, until this whole deal closes, or can you help them in any way to expand if, if, that, if that were to make sense? I would not describe um, either uh, SkyMint or Parallel as being hamstrung. 
Um, the existing management teams are aggressively working to right size their business. There's been significant um, improvement in their cost structures over the last uh, two years. Um, they have, um, they're very much living in reality and the improvement in those, uh, in the performance of those businesses um, has been material. Um, again, we're, we don't have those positions consolidated. And so we are, we're excited about being able to provide detailed supplemental information as we complete these restructurings. Okay, thank you. Look, if you don't mind, I mean, I don't know if they, there's more people in the queue, but I'll add a couple of more. Um, so regarding the other three credits on Sunstream, and I know you can't say much there, but uh, on the JV Sunstream Bank Corp, um, once you set up Sunstream USA and you have all these very attractive assets in Florida, Michigan, and other places, you become an attractive partner to a number of people, right? So, so I know it's a bit hypothetical, but the three other credits, even though they may be, may be performing, they could still become, you know, part of the ecosystem, right? I'm saying you could even equitize them if that were to make sense that you could negotiate that. Can you make any general comments on that, or that's just out of a question? No, no it's, a, it's, a, it's an astute observation. Um, there are a number of opportunities for further consolidation in the U.S. We have been approached by um, a handful of parties that are very interested in, in gaining greater efficiencies and scale um, and consolidating the U.S. landscape. Now, those parties um, you know, may be a part of the existing credit book, but there's also a number that are outside of that group as well. So there are um, a number of broader discussions um, that get had from time to time. Um, you know, if, if something material were to arise, it would certainly be disclosed. Um, and until then, um, we're really focused internally on improving performance uh, within our platform, uh, but, but do expect at the margin that uh, consolidation and M&A opportunities will arise you know, over the next 12 to 24 months. And, and very last one, I mean, obviously, we're, you know, a lot of focus on the U.S., but uh, this Friday we may have some good uh, positive news out of, out of Germany with the Bundesrat decision. Um, you know, when people ask me about Canadian companies and exposure there, I talk about Tilray, I talk about Aurora and others, of course, and, and Kuralif continues to make inroads there. What can we say about SNDL in terms of their current position in, uh, in front of European opportunities or, or, or the plans that you may have? Thank you. That's all. I'm going to have Tyler just comment on um, the current state of play in, in international and related opportunities. Yeah, happy to. Um, look, we've been spending a lot of time evaluating international markets. Obviously, Germany is one of the biggest populous countries over there. Um, there's a ton of opportunities, so we're anxiously awaiting the final news for medical versus recreational, what that landscape looks like. Um, we will be headed to ICBC to not only meet a few individuals, but get a better lay of the land. Um, but you'll kind of see us focus on a few more over there like Germany. So we'll, we'll leave it at that for now, but you'll, you'll definitely see some um, opportunities or some foresight into that market once legislation fully rolls out. Understood. Thank you. Very helpful. Thank you. This concludes the question and answer session. We would like to turn the conference back over to Zach George for any closing remarks. Please go ahead. Thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. We look forward on updating you on our progress in the near future. Have a great day. This concludes today's conference call. You may disconnect your lines. Thank you for participating and have a pleasant day. Hey, what's up? I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm just going to close the... Um, webcast window so that doesn't interrupt us and uh, yeah I can look at the chart a little bit more and then I'll probably close this down and so um, and I'm just gonna plug myself in just to make sure that you guys can hear me just kind of a paranoia thing I always like to hear myself when I'm when I'm streaming uh, but yeah uh, so let's look at the chart here uh, the first thing that I noticed is that um, really uh, that these lower lows were being formed along with higher lows, um, but then it does look like it's kind of started to flatten out, respecting 142 as the bottom, but as that continues to get tested, uh, it's just going to be weakening that level of support. So it has been just, you know, hanging out around there, and the... 
you know, over here where I said, you know, needs to confirm really what we needed was to, we had this, you know, wick up to a high of like 145. We needed to see a close above that to confirm. And we haven't seen that. And it does look like closes have been as high as, uh, you know, 144, right where the cursor is here. And so we haven't been able to close above that. More recently, you know, in the past 15, 20 minutes, we haven't been able to get any wicks above that level. So getting a wick above 144 really just becomes an accomplishment at this point. Getting a close above 144 would be really good. Uh, but, you know, as time is moving on, this, you know, kind of range that the price is trading in just keeps narrowing. And so it's either going to break to the upside or the downside. Uh, with the highs getting lower and the lows staying the same, it seems more likely that it would break to the downside because the um, levels to the upside, they're, they're just, you know, it's just pressing it down. It's not able to get higher. Uh, and so it's not able to weaken, uh, you know, a, a level like 144.5 where I have this line here or, you know, 145. If it keeps going up to that level, eventually the sellers are going to run out and then it's going to break higher. But as it's going lower here, that's suggesting that sellers are, that there are sellers at lower prices that were not able to get buyers at higher prices. And... So this suggests that it will be breaking to the downside. So I wrote, you know, bottom is in or descending triangle. This, you know, could be viewed as a descending triangle. We did break out of that, but we could not confirm either getting above 144.5 or, you know, 145 being the highs here. Um, and so it does seem like this will be breaking to the downside. And Mo did point out uh, that I believe looking at the 10 minute time scale, uh, we can see that there was some consolidation over here, uh, bumping into resistance right around 140. Uh, let's see if I throw up the volume profile. Don't really see too much there, but this consolidation here could be acting as support. It does look like we got some wicks below. Uh, let's see, a wick low here of 138, one here, wick low of 138.5, and then... Let's see, what's this price over here? What's the high over here? Yeah, 140. So, you know, that was resistance here. And so that might very well be acting as support moving into the future. Um, and I'm just going to switch this back to the one minute time scale. So, yeah, and then also, too, I mean, uh, I had noted um, these, uh, did this uh, shading of these channels to highlight that, you know, this looks like. A bull flag that broke to the downside, and then another, uh, sorry, bear flag, bear, fra bear flag that broke to the downside, another bear flag that broke to the downside. This one, you know, not as clear, so kind of similar to this one, you know, and being upsloping, but then that did break to the downside, however, not making new lows. Um, and so, right now, I mean, we could think of this as, you know, this being, you know, like the flagpole. And we are now, you know, consolidating over here. So this is a potential um, bear flag that we are looking at here. I'm just going to adjust this so we have that. Actually, I don't know if that makes it clear or what. Um, if I adjust the shading, I think it will adjust the shading for all of them. Yeah, it does it for all of them, so I can't do that. Um, so yeah, I might just leave this as no lines on that. But yeah, this does look like this could be a bear flag. And so what I think we really need to see is a close above 144.5, but ideally a close, and this is on the minute time scale, above 145. And we might very well get that. And also, you know, I am, I, you know, just going over how this looks like it could be a larger scale bear flag. But also, you know, looking at this closer up here, we do have this range here going from, you know, 142 up to 144. 
this could be a little mini bull flag that's being formed right here. So maybe that will break to the upside. Um, but you know, it's tough because you know, like I have this trend line drawn here suggesting that might be a descending triangle. Could also draw it out like this. And you know, just being in this channel that we are getting, you know, we're not able to get back to these highs or the, the highs here. So, um, and let's see, um, stop loss at 141 then. Up to you. I am not the best at stop losses. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it depends on time horizon. And um, yeah, uh, I think that, I mean, for me, I tend to look at the daily candles as far as how I assess the charts. I don't, um, I think, you know, as I'm doing the channel and stuff, I'm starting to pay more attention to the uh, intraday action. Um, and, you know, but I'm not really there yet as far as paying such close attention to what's going on during the day. I usually just look for the daily closes, things like that. And so it is possible that this bearish engulfing candle could move back up. We would want to see a close above the low that was from yesterday, the 20th, or sorry, not the low, the open, which is $1.48. So if we don't see a close above $1.48, then it would be, you know, waiting for confirmation of this bearish engulfing candle. Um, and, and then I also see uh, the 360-day four-hour charts look like it's a channel. Let's see, look at the four-hour chart. Now, like um, going back to, I don't know how far this would be going back, but uh, this does, yeah, it has been trading in this. I mean, might switch over to the daily. Yeah, and this also, I mean, this could be something over here. You know, fake out there. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, and also uh, I just went over the... Um, a lot of the cannabis stocks and you know one thing that i'm like i'm trying to pick up on get better at especially with doing this channel is a lot of times you know there will be huge momentum in something and, and then everybody is you know screaming you know it's going to go to the to whatever value um but that's usually around when the top is in and i've noticed that a lot with rumble i'm bullish on rumble I've noticed, you know, the uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern with that. I think it's going a lot higher, but, you know, whenever there's like really like demand for me to put another video out on it, that's usually marking the top and then it pulls back. And so right now it's, you know, kind of at that point. And so a lot of the cannabis stocks have just run up a bunch. And, you know, I think that that's, you know, A on the real, like the rumor of the reclassification of cannabis as a schedule three drug rather than schedule one, which is largely just for like medicinal purposes, basically that it is a drug that's recognized by the DEA as having medicinal applications. So I think that's good, but it's not like as far as a company like SNDL or, you know, Tilray, any of those, I don't think it's really, I mean, they would have to like pivot more into the medicinal realm, but my understanding is they're more in the recreational realm. Um, and so it seems to me like it's like, you know, a rumor within a rumor that um, these cannabis stocks, uh, you know, are going up on the possibility of the reclassification of something that wouldn't actually really affect the businesses that much because, they're not focused on medicinal purposes, unless, you know, I'm mistaken about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it seems like it's talk. It's also, you know, Washington during an election year talking about cannabis. And, and so it just, it makes me feel like it's more of a political move rather than something that actually has a meaningful impact on a business. 
And so I do think that, you know, this run up could be, you know, whether it's SNDL or the other ones, I do think that there could be a pullback, but that's not to say that I don't think that would be, you know, a potentially good dip buying opportunity. Um, but yeah, let's see. And then I have it at a dollar thirty nine. Yeah, it with a dollar forty being support for some time. Yeah, and let's look at the uh, volume profile. I think it can also offer some kinds. Yeah, so we're really, I mean, we're trading in an area where there has been a good amount of consolidation. Let's see if I'm going to remove those drawings. Yeah, so I mean, but we're kind of at the base of that. But like, you know, these bars are all kind of approximate and stuff. Uh, but yeah, coming down to here, uh, 137 for, you know, because we see this consolidation over here, you know, the tops over here. So that could be the bottom. It also served as support over here, wicks down here. So yeah, one, I guess 137 right around there, that could be an area tested as support, but it could also, you know, retest. Uh, the bottom, and actually, I'm going to throw up the drawings again, remove that volume profile. Yeah, and with, you know, one of the things that I, you know, always trying to work on my execution, my trading, you know, I look at this and I see, um, let's see, I thought, yeah, the bottom here, 125, it's like, okay, well, that was the bottom. I want to buy at the bottom, so I'm going to place a buy order at 125. And, you know, but then it's like, well, we're putting in higher lows, Uh that order is never going to get filled and you can never buy the bottom. You can never sell the top. You're never going to be exact. And then, so here, you know, this was a great dip buying opportunity. Take a measurement from there, buy in the dip here, 20% over the course of like a week, over the course of like, um, I guess like two months, 27%. Um, and so with that being said, with this, you know, being a higher low, that coming down to 131, seeing a low here of 130, and then before this rally up, we had a low of 131. I think that, you know, it could very well be finding support. You know, I was just uh, going over the volume profile, maybe in the range, you know, I'm seeing the top of this candle here, the open was 135. I could see price, I mean, if we do put in a bearish engulfing candle, I could see price pulling back to 135 to 137. That could coincide with this uptrending level. And that could potentially be a great dip buying opportunity. Let's see, are there other patterns that stand out here? Um, I mean, I just see like, this looks like, I mean, it's, Trying to think of, you know, is there like an inverse head and shoulders or anything like that? But it always tends to be like these two, you know, so it's like a double bottom. So here, I mean, we have like a double bottom form. We'll probably get another test of that. Also, you know, over here. Yeah, so I, and this, you know, is 133. So I, I feel like a range between 133 to 137 could potentially be pulling back. Uh, but I think that would all depend on how the day closes, we would want to see a close above $1.48 to suggest, above, not at, above $1.48 to suggest that this is not a bearish engulfing candle. This is not going down. Even if we do see a bearish engulfing candle on the day, we would need to see confirmation. It could be a fake out. Um, and that would be another close suggesting you know, price is going down. So looking at this here, yeah, I mean, I like I don't have a position uh, and if I were to get one, you know, I'd, I'd want to wait for a pullback to 130, 137 at least, I would think. And that would be, you know, this is something I need to get better at, not just like averaging into a small position, but that would be like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to uh, establish maybe a quarter position at 137, 135 would be the next level, 133 would be the next level. And then if it breaks below, let's see, I'm going to switch. I just like looking at the daily chart, sorry. If it breaks below 
like, I mean, these lows over here, that's like 133. If it breaks below that, that could coincide with testing the bottom of this channel. I would think the low over here, 131. I would think that if price returned to 131, that could be a break. That would be a, not a higher low. That would be a, you know, low at the same same price, that could be the beginning of what would be like a slip and a break of this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I think the chart's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mike, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I always tend to, you know, uh, especially with doing these videos, I end up, ooh, that's interesting. I'll buy a little bit on the dip and then I just, um, uh, you know, start, um, yeah, uh, you know, have too many positions that are just too small to really do much with. And so like I need to get better at, you know, being more um I don't know, exact with my trades. And so the one that I'm really interested in is Rumble. I, you know, was hearing about that on social media. Everybody's going on about it. And I kind of, you know, just made a video on it to because there was demand for it. But then I just realized, well, actually there's like a pretty bullish pattern here that I think will play out in the next maybe month or two. Uh, and so now I think is like the time to accumulate. So it's like, well, you know, I want to focus my energy on the plays that I have the most conviction in. Um, and the one that I, I always refer to is a quest of therapeutics, uh, which I noticed in inverse head and shoulders, made a little bit of money with it, but I didn't stick around for the measured move. And I could have made a lot more money with it. Uh, basically, I, I put out a video months ago suggesting that it would go from 250 to four dollars. It went from 250 to above five dollars, um, and I didn't stick around for that. I, I stuck around for like a 10% swing, uh, not for the whole thing. I just lost conviction after a while, and so like right now, you know, really whenever like there's a lot of hype, and whether it's cannabis or SNDL or you know anything, when there's a lot of hype, that's usually the time when there's going to be you know, a top. And maybe we've seen that top at $1.55, uh, which we saw today, high $1.55. Maybe earnings is marking a pullback. And, you know, we might very well be seeing that if we do get a bearish engulfing candle. And so really, like, it's like, and I think that this is how, like, why it's so hard for retail to be making money uh, trading because when there's hype, there's a lot of attention. We, you know, it's like the dopamine, we go to it. And that's actually when you want to exit, you know, up here and then wait for it to calm down, maybe wait for a week, wait for two weeks. And if price is down here and it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to wait for it to keep going down. I don't want to buy it, you know, as it's falling. That's actually the time that you want to be establishing a position where it's, you know, not, oh, it's at, you know, 137. I'm going to buy, you know, as many shares as I can afford to. That's when you buy a quarter of a position or, you know, whatever fraction of a position. If it goes lower, then you just build that. So you get your average down as it's boring, as there's not much attention. And the next time there's, you know, news or rumor of, oh, well, it might actually go to schedule four or schedule three is, you know, um, being passed. Then it's like, okay, now it's going back up trim or, you know, sell. Uh, and so earnings came just as the industry was getting some correction. Yeah. So it's kind of unfortunate if it if earnings would have came out like last week, then I think it could have really rallied a lot, but we just had this, I mean, and I, yeah, I mean, these candles here, this is a almost 7% move and again, six and a half percent over the course of, you know, from the bottom here of this red candle to the top here, it's up 18%. And so, yeah, earnings just come, it's already been priced in. And so whenever anything moves up, whenever you see a number of green candles going into earnings, it's likely going to be like a sell, like this is, you know, by the rumor, whether that's by the rumor of the schedule three or by the rumor, you know, earnings are coming out and then earnings is, you know, the sell the news event. And so that that's what looks like is happening here. I mean, it's quite possible that it could turn around. But for me, looking at the chart, and I probably won't establish a position just because I, I need to, you know, hone in my, my focus and, and the trades. 
do do exact trades in and out. I, I need to get better at that. This I think would be a distraction for me, but I think that 137 is the time to really start adding back into that. And uh, Mike, I see your other comment. Uh, if people want to know when SNDL will go parabolic, I think it's when you see insider buys rather than sells. So far, they haven't been buying their own stock. Yeah, have they not been selling either? I haven't been paying attention to that. I, um, but yeah, I think that. And also too, um, I'm reading this book. I I done one book review. I, I'm going to try to do them throughout the year, but I've just with the channel, I haven't been uh, reading as much. Uh, but I've been reading this book uh, by Peter Lynch on uh, One Up on Wall Street. And it's, you know, he, he's not the type of investor that I want to be. Uh, but I think that he has, you know, a lot of, you know, valuable lessons, a lot of valuable insight. And um, one of the things that he was bringing up in that is that when you do notice insiders buying, it's important to note who is buying them. If it's a CEO and the CEO is making, you know, tens, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and the CEO is buying, you know, a few million dollars of shares, that doesn't really say too much because, you know, it's like the CEO is already, you know, super wealthy, doing good. They can just, you know, oh, well, you know, this will look good for the company. I'll buy back some shares with, you know, effectively pocket change for them. What you want to be paying attention to is, you know, if they're higher up on the ranks and they're buying, they've got a lot of money. They're not worried about it. it looks good for the stock. But if they're lower on the ranks, if insiders such as, um, uh, you know, whether it's store managers, the um, um, I'm not sure. You know, the the growers, the 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 people doing the the work, like the the feet on the ground people. If if they're buying, that's showing a lot of conviction that people who don't have a lot of money that are, you know, like you and me, have conviction in the stock, have conviction in the company. If they're buying it, that's the good sign. So it's good to look for buyers who are not necessarily CEOs or CFOs, or they've got a C in their title. They're, you know, they're well off enough that it doesn't matter what the stock price does. They just do that so it looks good. And they make money either way. And then, uh, and so... And I'm just going to type up because there's this heart emoji. I see uh, Sircron, uh, nice logic. That's how I DCA. Yeah, for me, when I DCA, it's it's like I understand the way to do it, but I just, like I, I'll do a Fibonacci retracement. I'll do, I'll do one here. Um, and this just gives me, I don't have all of the levels marked here, but let's see. Um, I'll put them all here. And, you know, so for me, like what I've been doing, which I, I need to get away from this, is it's like, oh, well, I mean, maybe it will find support at the 618. I'll add a little bit there. And then if it comes down to the 786, I'll add a little bit there. But it's like, I need to not just add a little bit. I need to say, you know, I want to have X number of shares. And I think that the lowest this will go is returning to 31 Maybe it will come down to 30, uh, sorry, 25, 125, and that'll be like a fake out bottom. If it goes below 125, you know, I don't know where the bottom would be after that. And so that might be, you know, a way to evaluate it. And yeah, it's like, let's say, you know, just 100 shares round number. Uh, so for me, if I were to dollar cost average, I would probably do 25 shares at 137, 25 at 135, uh, another 20, and then maybe 50 at um, 133. And if it starts to go lower than like 131, um, I start to try and have a uh, uh, stop loss plan. But that's, you know, a way to get your average down. And then if you do have to cut the loss, it's not as bad. Uh, but yeah, I, I've, with stop losses, I've ended up selling the bottom. So um, I, I still need to refine that strategy. And say, uh, Jay's saying they missed earnings. Yeah, uh, let's see. What's the, um, I can actually pull it up. I've got, uh, I can, let's see. I've got the report here. 
what's their EPS? Oh man, I'm not too great at, you know, navigating these reports. Let's see. Yeah, um, maybe. Okay, so the New York listed Canadian Cannabis and Liquor Company reported higher than gross profit of $57.3 million Canadian dollars or $42.5 million. I just want to look at like EPS is like the estimated uh, price per share. Is that right? Uh, and if they fell short of that, ah oh man, seeking alpha. Yeah, I think I might, let's see, close this down, get on with the day. But yeah, I mean, this does seem like it is trending up here. It would be nice. We are testing, you know, all <clears throat> three more minutes. I'll do three more minutes and then I'll close this down. And hopefully in those next, you know, couple candles here, we can see it break above 144.5. Getting pretty close, making some attempts there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, cannabis stocks have been, you know, on a, on a pretty good run the past week. So if, you know, um, and so for me, I, I had a small, I have a small position in Tilray, but I trimmed the majority of it. It's a very small position. I trimmed the majority of it over the past couple of days, just cause, you know, I, I still have a very small position if it does continue to go higher, but if it doesn't, you know, I'm not worried about it. And, um, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I do feel like cannabis, you know, just moved up a lot on rumor and when the news breaks, maybe it'll be good news. Maybe it'll be bad news, but it's possible it could take months before that happens. So there might be a pullback before then. And then when there's more talk about it, um, it goes back up. Ooh, look, well, this is exciting. This is exciting. What is the high for this candle? 145. So we haven't seen that since over here. This could be the breakout we've been waiting for. And this could be a great way to end this stream with a uh, breakout. Hopefully we get a confirmation. This is for the 14 minutes. So I'll basically do a couple more minutes to see if we can get multiple closes above this line. And ideally, at least get one above 145. Oh, so we got one up there. That looks like a um, dragonfly doji, but then, you know, coming back down here, it's not, not so great. Yeah, I'll wait for this minute to, to close. And, you know, while I'm, I'm doing this, I don't know that I've uh, put up the uh, subscribe button. If you guys do like this content, if you want to see me cover more SNDL or... Uh, you know, cannabis stocks, make sure you like the video, let me know in the comments and or in the live chat and, uh, and make sure you subscribe. Trying to do earnings calls. Uh, I think this might be the last one that I do for this earnings season. Um, but, you know, I do feel like it's a nice way to learn more about the companies uh, that you and I are interested in. And um, yeah, just to give us a little bit of an edge to learn a little bit more about it. And then also, you know, potentially in some cases trading the earnings uh, which I didn't do on this one, uh, but I do feel like, you know, maybe with the um, uh, 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 Schedule 3 rumor and stuff, maybe this, you know, earnings call is kind of marking a top for that run, but, you know, maybe this could be, you know, just the 
a little pause, a little bit of a lull before continuation, or, you know, maybe not. It does look like we got rejected from that uh, 144.5, and I'll just wait for this candle to close. Hopefully we can reclaim it. Um, but yeah, I think that this is kind of a nice example. I mean, this is the one minute time scale, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But with this, you know, we got a close above that level and then another close at that same price, but we couldn't get a close higher. And so that's like, there's no confirmation. You need to eclipse that high to suggest that there are still buyers, that it there is momentum still pushing it higher. And then also with this big move down, and volume going up uh, that suggests that, um, I believe that it's, yeah, this seems like um, when price is going down and volume's going up, that would mean that I believe, let's, uh, let, let's look at the um, stock price to volume ratio. And so I believe that if price is going down, if price is going down and volume is going up, downtrend supported by volume looks short for short entries. And so that's, you know, we see this big candle coming down, lots of volume. That suggests that it is quite possible that, you know, 155 for the day, the open really price, is that what the open was? Yeah. That could be the top before we see a little bit of a pullback in the, whether it's SNDL or the cannabis sector. But I do think that there could be some nice dip buying opportunities in the next, you know, maybe month, um, next couple of weeks when things do start to settle out. There might be some more rumor and or news on schedule two, pro sorry, schedule three process. And um, yes, yeah, so just some good news on the companies. Yep. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, Judu ba Bale, or is it Yudu Bale? Um, uh, Tilray, uh, Canopy Growth Company, and Sundial. Oh, psychedelics as well. And I assume that's for medicinal purposes. Um, I did have, you know, Mind Matter. I think the ticker was M I N D, which I had previously looked at. I'll note that here, uh, but I'll also add. Uh, P B M A T A I and C Y B N, and so yeah, I'll um, see about that. Yeah, it looks like it's breaking. Yeah, so um, yep. So I I think that yeah, in this, you know, couldn't get the confirmation up there, and so I guess with the close at that, then that's a sign that it's breaking. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think that there could be some good dip buying opportunities for SNDL cannabis in the next few weeks. Mind Med, yeah, yeah, M I N D. So yeah, maybe I'll do a, a video on those as well. The cannabis sector ones that I did was a pretty popular video. Um, but yeah, just trying to um, you know crank out videos that get a lot of views and stuff. And, uh, and so trying to go with what's what's trending and also what's interesting, what looks good in the chart. And having seen, you know, what's gone on with SNDL, the cannabis sector was pretty interesting the past, you know, week really. But I do think that, you know, dip buys, and I'm actually, you know, I don't know that I will participate in this, but I will create an alert for myself, which I don't always pay attention to my alerts, you know, I've got all these turned off. Uh, let's see. Um, I will add one for below 137. And that might get my attention. And maybe I would establish a position to swing there. Uh, but yeah, but anyways, I am going to close this down, get on with my day. Thank you all so much for joining. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you did miss the earlier part of this stream, I will add timestamps as I close this down. So you guys should be able to skip to, uh, you know, uh, Zach, the CEO, Alberto, the CFO, I believe Tank is his name, uh, who does liquor, and then Tyler, who does the cannabis sector, and also questions and answers. So I will include uh, timestamps to those. And yeah, no problem. I'm happy to do this. And um, 
I'll try to do a follow-up on cannabis maybe over the next week. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'll keep you guys posted. And I will be doing a live stream. I always do them Sundays, 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you guys want to you know, follow up, be a really nice way to just casually go over charts, kind of like you know how I did it here. But that will be on you know any tickers that you guys have requests for. So make sure you tune into that. Always fun to do it. Very casual stream. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Great rest of the day trading, and I'll 